All right, I guess it's a good time to start. Two people are not going to make it, I guess. <laughs> All right, so let's start sitting. Get into our easy posture. Sometimes not so easy, but it's called easy. <laughs> So sit up as tall as you can, inhale, lift up the shoulders. And let's get into the neck a little bit, a couple of stretches side to side. Try your shoulders, stretch them back and down. And one more time, just like that. And let's bring our index and thumbs together. Let them rest onto your knees. Take a deep breath, noticing the energy of the breath, the pathway it takes in your body. And stay focused and curious about these breaths, this energy of life, how it travels in and out of your body. To inhale, energizing you with fresh, oxygenated energy. As you exhale, releasing that stale and old used energy. You're noticing the quality of the breath. It doesn't matter how it feels right now. We know that it can always change. And the breath is dependent on our mind state. In the mind state, it's also dependent on the breath. And sometimes we do not, do not have control of our mind as easily. So we can use the breath to control the mind. So let's inhale, lift up your spine, fill the lungs with energy and hold. And we exhale fully and completely. Towards the end of the exhale, we squeeze the navel in to expel any residual air that's been used up, deoxygenated, and then allow the belly to relax. And then he wants to fill up with energy again. So let the lungs expand. Let him fill up to the top. Pressurize a little bit at the top, holding the breath in, noticing how you feel that pressure rising all the way to the collarbones. And then naturally your body wants to exhale to release that old breath. And keep an awareness on these breaths. And we try to notice a few things about the breath. And what we first notice that there's not just inhale and exhale, that there can be some pauses between the two. After we inhale, you can create a little pause. There's no breath, no thought, no doing. Just empty space and clarity. And then we naturally want to exhale. Let our exhalation go through all the way to the bottom of the lungs, squeezing the navel. You squeeze that a little bit and you notice that there's no more energy in the body, no more fresh oxygen. So then the body naturally wants to inhale and it happens on its own. It's a simple law of the universe of physics. Empty vessels tends to get filled. So it's the communication vessels idea, empty to full, empty to full.
so continue to still be curious about the breath. And notice those pauses. Notice how it feels in those breaks, those spaces there's no doing. There's a glimpse into eternity in that pause, in that space. We're doing, just being, expanding, seeing, being that awareness that you are. Experience that part of you that is never dying, always present, always aware. Just simply disconnect from it because we get busy. And as you explore a little bit more, you may notice after the inhale, when you have that pause, pressure gets to be increased. And that pressure creates a need for release, for relaxation. So you notice that. So that pressure basically causes you to exhale. And then after you exhale, you exhale fully, you have that pause again. And after a little bit of pause, your body feels anxious to breathe back in. So notice that there's a little anxiety in a good way, not a bad kind of anxiety. It's just a trigger for the next breath to come in. And then when we inhale and that pressure builds up, it's a little pressure, somebody's pushing you and you want to release that pressure. So that causes you to exhale. So notice those uh, very small changes. So that pressure causes tension. That tension causes you to want to relax. And then that need to relax causes you to breathe out. So again, a little pressure, a little tension, a little anxiety. This keeps the cycle of breathing going. So we should not always see anxiety as a bad thing. It's just a sign that we need to move on to do something different. It's a sign that the cycle needs to happen again, that we need to be moving, not stagnating. And this is a training practice that I took many years ago in Vipassana style meditation. So you really, really stick with your breath and observe the breath to the very minute form of it. So you go deeper and deeper, feeling the breath as it touches the nostrils, the back of the throat, the lungs, the bronchia. So we're just really exploring deeply into the breath. So we got to get a glimpse of that today. And the more we do that, the more connected we get inside, the more clear and spacious the mind becomes and the heart rate really calms down a lot. All right, so let's go ahead and release that and start to move a little bit. <clears throat> Just flex the spine, more word and back here. Move a little bit side to side, just pressing into one knee and stretching the body on its side. <clears throat> now let's create a circle, center into your navel, squeezing the navel in as you Stretch back, you're opening that spine. So inhale as you rotate back, exhale. I inhale forward, exhale back. So inhale down and around. Exhale, squeeze the navel as you round the spine. Now 
and let's reverse. Right. And let's release the legs and make sure they're still okay after sitting. So shake them down a little bit, moving the energy, and then point and flex the feet. And go side to side. Tap the sides of the feet. And see if you can get more of your foot or toes to touch. Just to get a good stretch on the ankle. Okay. We're going to do a um, try at least a quick lock of the big toes. Let's <laughs> see if you can get them to lock together. That gets this areas really uh, activated for our Qigong practice. It's gonna be squeezing on each other's um, necks, <laughs> which is actually um, working on the neck. So, because the big toe is the head and the neck area. All right. If you wanna go a little further, we can try and see if we can interlace. This may cramp your foot quite a bit, but see if we can do it this way. Interlace that and then the next toe. And then at least maybe just the first two today. It's hard to get them all just in one shot in one day. I haven't done it for a while either, so it may not work today. Yeah, so just we get two of the toes. Breathe into that a little bit. <laughs> This gets the energy to circulate in our meridians in the periphery and feet get a chance to stretch and relax and squeeze just like our hands would squeeze like that um, to help the circulation and the blood flow or the meridian flow as well because the feet stay cramped in our shoes too long unless you walk bare feet in your garden, which is highly recommended. <laughs> All right, great. Okay, now we got some energy in the toes. We can stand up and we'll do some Qigong. So starting by um, just doing this easy, natural movement, circulating the energy through the central meridian. So we're gonna exhale as we go down, pressing the energy down, connecting to the earth here. And inhale, bring the palms up and connect to the sky. Gather some energy here. And then exhale, bring it through the central column. And continue that at your own pace. Put that beautiful cheap palm music now. So find your breath and find that connection with the movement. Chi Kong, it's a moving meditation. It's very slow, very mindful. Would you really get to be present with your body? Good. Keep going at your pace. Now we gather straight in the front instead of the side. And we still go out. Floating the arms. Knees are softly bent when we do standing postures. Unless we do one-legged postures when one leg gets more weight. 
Otherwise, the knees are soft. Down and bring it through again. And because it's change of season here soon, we need a little bit more help in our immunity system. So the next one is gonna be for the lungs and the thymus gland. So we're gonna be right here in front of the chest. We're gonna inhale, bring the elbows up as far as we can and exhale, closing them in, bringing the hands to the chest. Inhale, lifting the elbows back and the hands kind of face each other now. Lifting up, opening the top of the lungs, then exhale, closing, hugging your lungs right here. Okay. Inhale, lift, expand, elbows lift, feel that, and exhale. Keep going. Two more. Good. Now we're gonna do separating heaven and earth. So one hand is gonna be down here. We start at the center of the body, the lower dantian. Right hand stays down, the left hand's gonna lift. And we face the palm up into the opposite side and we look under the hand. Exhale, we're gonna bring the hands to their center to switch. Left hand down, right arm up, look up under the hand. The bottom hand is facing forward, the right hand is facing left. Exhale, twist, switch. Separating having an earth, creating a diagonal line of energy in the body across our lungs. Exhale. Switch. And start to feel this energy you're working with in the middle of your palm, in the fingertips as well. It's your chi, your vibrant energy that you have inside of you. And now you're exchanging it and sharing it with the universe, gathering more of the good chi from the sky and the earth and releasing that being chi that we may have in our system. <clears throat> I'm going to add a little bit to the same movement, but when we go up, we're going to twist to the left, still looking for that palm. It's a gentle twist from the waist, opening a little bit more laterally. Exhale and switch. Feel that under your shoulders, under your armpit. You really start to feel that energy tingling in your hands and fingertips if you really pay attention. Know that this is traveling now through your body, from the arms, it goes directly to the heart and the heart can send it wherever it's needed. We trust this wisdom of the body that it guides the energy to your shoulder, to your hip, to your knee, wherever it's needed.
and bring it back. <clears throat> now we're gonna inhale with the arms here. Exhale, stretching the arms out, squeezing the navel to the spine and rounding forward a little bit. Inhale, bring it into your lungs. Exhale, out of the lungs, you're pressing and squeezing and rounding. Inhale, bring it in. Exhale. Squeeze the navel and you got your maximum point. And then inhale, bring it back. Exhale. Still working with the lungs, the back of the lungs now. Expanding the lung capacity right there against your shoulder blades, between the shoulder blades. Where you can get really tense and really dense, kind of blocking our lungs to inhale fully. It's a nice little bend in the knees as you go down. Inhale and exhale. When you exhale, slightly drop on your knees. Inhale, bring it back up to standing. Bring it in. Imagine you're grabbing this energy from the universe and you bring it into you. Good. Two more. So here you want your feet to be actually a little bit more than hip width to have more stability. But it looks like you guys are doing great. Good, release. Now we're gonna work a little bit directly on the lung and heart meridian. We're gonna bring our fingers together like um, all the five fingers touching. And then we're gonna tap right here. This is the lung and the heart are really close together. So when we do the four, the five fingers together, we can tap into all this area. So breathe in and breathe out naturally. Just knowing that we're increasing the energy of the lungs and of the heart. You go a little bit closer to uh, above the colored bone, you're going to find a sternal notch here, um, a clavicular notch rather, the base of the neck. So let's find that. It's a tender spot sometimes, it's right under the collarbone, next to the neck, but down and out a little bit. I'm just gonna feel a little tender here. So putting some pressure there with just the thumb and breathe in. As you put a pressure and breathe out as you release the pressure. Keep going like that. This is also the pathway through which the vagus nerve travels under the clavicle to the heart and then to the visceral system here. So we are also activating the parasympathetic response as we work with this area. Breathing in, feeling the power of the breath, dissipating some negative energy from this area of the body, some stagnation rather. We have a lot of stagnation in the neck and shoulder. Two more. All right, the next one is gonna be under the arm for um, these points for the lymphatic flow. So if we find it right under the uh, big muscle here, part of the trapezius, right? So if we squeeze it, it's gonna be tender. So we're gonna go right underneath that. And so we can do both at the same time. We're gonna cross the arms and squeeze like that, like you're hugging yourself, but you're pushing, putting pressure on that point. And just breathe like that. Inhale as you apply the pressure, exhale as you gently release it. This also activates the uh, heart meridian, which is inside of the arm. So we're gonna have more gentle flow of energy from the heart and into the heart.
good. Now we're gonna find another spot on the very back of the vertebrae, the cervical vertebrae. It's really the whole palm can slide against the neck here to move this energy of that most protrusive vertebrae in the neck, just to smooth the energy circulating through the spine. This will suit our nervous system. Okay. Now we're going to do one for increasing our ability to heal, which is the hour looking back to release 10,000 illnesses. Hopefully we don't have 10,000 of them, but who knows? <laughs> All right. So inhale, we're gonna bring the arms out to the side and we turn to the left, looking back over that hand. Exhale, we're gonna bring it down, bending the knees a little bit. Inhale as we lift up, lengthen the spine, open to the right, drop those thumbs back and exhale, bring it into center. Inhale, left side, rotate back and down, looking over your left thumb, exhale. Inhale, open, lift, stretch and turn. And this works with the lung, the heart meridian and the neck, all the vertebrae of the neck. I'm going to try and twist a little bit more each time. So we're going to use the waist now as well. And exhale down. Inhale, turn, twist, and look back, twisting from the waist. Knees are bent right here. And then back to center. Inhale, other side. Exhale. You feel how your arms may get a little bit tired at first, but they will feel better after a bit. Because we're releasing that neck energy that is so dense sometimes. Good. Keep going. Two more each side, twisting a little bit more. Last one. Good. Exhale, bring it back to center. Release the neck forward a little bit, the head forward, and let it drop to slide in hand. And inhale, we're going to bring the chin in and slide forward. Here we can hold onto the waist. Inhale, tap the chin, round the back, squeeze the navel to the spine, and then exhale, reaching forward. We're like doing a wave with the spine. But we're starting with the neck and nose. Imagine you're drawing as far away as you can and bring that line spiraling in as you stretch into the body. So away, and then down and in, or rounding the back. It's like a warm movement or a wave, rather. So we're creating that fluidity in the spine. We open the chest at the top, and then we reach forward down and spiraling in like a snail, and then out again. So now stop right there and let's go ahead and give it some twist in the waist. 
switching the weight from side to side, just a gentle twist, looking back over the shoulder, holding on to our low back. If we need more support, we bring the hands to support the back, or you can still hold on to the waist. And let's add this flowing movement, Artesian Fountain, where we can or entertain. And inhale, bring it into the body, out to the side, bring it into center, and then slide up the body and out again. Imagine you are this fountain of energy and fountain of youth. You're gathering even more energy from the sky and from the earth. So you have this both energy of grounding and also of serenity connecting into your body. Lengthening the body, reaching to the sky, spread it around your aura gathers from the earth. Bring it up through your spine, from the root chakra all the way to the crown, and then spread it around. Very beautiful. We'll reorganize the nervous system. The body cells here to vibrate a little differently when the energy is organized. Our life flows more easily. Okay, so one more for the kidney meridian. Let's go ahead and inhale, bring the arms up. It can be together or hip with apart from this one. Exhale, bring the energy down and then guide it under the armpits and then back as far as you can reach behind you. And then back the uh, back body, down the back body. Inhale into the front. Bring the energy on the inside by your big toe into the ankle. And then slide it up the inner thighs. Go across above the navel and reach under your rib cage and tap the spleen meridian with your fingertips. Say, wake up, wake up, wake up. So we're energizing the spleen and the liver. Good, now we do it again. Inhale up. Exhale down under the armpits, down the back. Out the little toe, in the big toe, sliding up. And we cross, this energy crosses over, and then we tap right below the rib cage. Okay, inhale again, bring it up. And down. Under and back. Sweeping the energy of this kidney meridian backwards. That's how they get energized. Under kidney and spleen. Kidney in the back, spleen on the inside. And then we tap, tap, tap. Good, inhale, exhale, you're tickling your spleen, <laughs> one more. Good. Tap, tap, tap last time. You know, the spleen got a little stronger. We're going to help it uh, release a little bit more. 
Uh, we're gonna do this frog poses. So we're gonna squat down with the heels together. And now we're gonna inhale as we lift, keep the heels off the floor and exhale as we squat back down. We inhale, opening up the spine, squeeze the navel up to the spine, exhale down. Inhale, fingertips stay on the ground and heels stay off the floor as much as possible. Inhale, exhale. We're just helping that energy to circulate a little faster and to release any stagnant energy that doesn't serve us, that we just loosened up and released in that spleen exercise. So we're just kind of forcing it out, but hopefully still in a gentle way, but check, check with your knees. Sometimes the knees don't like this one. Great, three more. Good, and we're gonna drop the heels and stay hanging here for a bit, allowing the spine to open naturally. Knees can be bent. So just let the body hang, being pulled by gravity, and see how you open up that lumbar spine, especially two, three, four, and five vertebrae. Now this gets us ready for the next exercise, which is kind of the peak of class and then we get to rest. Um, so for this one, we open up the spine enough. So I think we should be good. Uh, let's bring the uh, mat against the wall. We're gonna be into the wall to create a snail pose or a plow pose. So we're gonna have our head towards the wall. Just give enough space. So we're gonna have to bring the legs up and over to the wall behind us. But at first we may go into it gently by supporting our back with the hands. And when you get the feet to the wall, then you can kind of press into the wall and let go of the support of the hands. So it's a deep inversion pose. You know, if you cannot stay on the wall, don't force it, use a bolster underneath your low back to keep you elevated. Who, who needs a bolster, yes. John, do you need a bolster? I know, it's gonna be hard to stick it, but eventually you will. Um, so lift it up a few times, inhale, exhale, just hold it, hold it, hold it. That would help for a bit. And yeah, I mean, you get a lot of this on this one, ha ha. Okay, so find more way there, even if the knees are bent, it doesn't matter. Slop you up a little bit. Good, and just get used to just being there and catch your breath. Mm. Inhale, exhale. So in this snail pose now, we're gonna start breathing through the mouth like a dog's breath. So you're gonna, a pant like a dog, okay? If anybody has dogs at home, you know how to do this, come on. So stick your tongue out. This is to release any stagnation, old energy from the spine. So go ahead and breathe. And when you exhale this way and breathe this way, you squeeze the navel to the spine, right? So you're gonna release, dislodge any sensation of limitation or anything that is very heavy in your spine, which is the nervous system. And the spine stores memories of our past and past lives as well. So we're just getting rid of our karma by breathing this way.
And also when we breathe this way, the navel pumps, pumps against the spine. So it opens up that area that is really constricted and compacted and compressed through the day. L4 and L5, you feel it right there, right? So keep going. Okay, now take a break from that breathing just for a moment. Reassess your posture. We're still gonna be here though. Oops, my hair is in the way. Okay. <laughs> okay, so we're still there, right? So now we're gonna breathe a different way. We're gonna stick the tongue out and you wanna like close and open your mouth like you want to say ta 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 so with your tongue sticking out a little bit ta 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 so like you're cutting your tongue with your teeth but not too hard okay ta 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 Cutting in through any of this energy that was stagnant and old. Just cutting through that delusion of the past, whatever kind of holds you back. Just breaking through those limits and limitations. Almost there. All right, we're going to release the back down to the floor very slowly. We're going to bring the hands up and the legs stay up, and we're going to shake legs and arms here. Just really, really get them to vibrate. To shake to release anything that may be stagnant into the earth. So let it drop from your toes into the hips, into the ground, from your fingertips to the shoulders, into the ground. Shake, shake, vibrate, vibrate. Whichever way feels good. This is very good for the uh, collagen to. Uh, Get nicely reset onto uh, the ligaments and muscles so our skin looks nice on our legs. It just reorganizes the collagen. And it's an inverse flow of energy, so we get to have that nice blood flow back to the heart through the pump of the calf. Mm -hmm. Now we're going to keep the arms shaking and the legs are going to lift towards the hands. Just lift your lower back off the floor as much as you can. 
lift and reach here. Nice. This empowers our Manipura chakra as well and still releases from the spine. It also resets the sacral chakra and the root chakra and the navel point. We have three areas working here. Now, right leg is gonna come in towards us. We hold it into the hand and left leg is up and down. Left leg up and down. Lengthen that left leg down as you lift your point as you go down your flex. Just really getting that ankle and that Achilles tendon and the calf activating and working. Inhale, exhale. And I will switch left leg up, right leg up and down. This also will reset our hips back in place. All right, next one, we're gonna have the feet together like we're in bound angle, we're gonna lift it off the floor. We're gonna engage the upper abs right below the rib cage. We lift the head off the floor, look down at the navel, but make sure you don't use the neck muscles. So maybe lightly hold your head into your fingers, into your hands. So it's from the core, from that upper abs. So we're gonna go in, exhale, and then start to pen like a dog again. your muscles engaging at the upper abs. And then as you pant, you're gonna engage the lower muscles, abdominals as well, below the navel and around the navel. So keep going. We're gonna continue the dog's breath as we do the yogi's bicycle with the legs. Now you can do it more uh, connected with the rhythm. Now elbow to knee for the next eight, opposite elbow to opposite knee. Inhale one side, exhale other side. Inhale deep, exhale complete. Crossing that energy diagonally, releasing. And bring it down. Now a little bit more into the obliques. Keep the legs out, up. I'm gonna reach hand to ankle, side to side. Uh, the head can be slightly lifted, but make sure you don't use your neck. Use those abs and the obliques. So you have a tabletop with your legs, knees are over the hips, don't bring them too close. It doesn't matter if you don't reach to your ankle, but keep the knees on top of your hips. Strong breath here, inhale one side, exhale other side. Inhale through the nose, exhale through the mouth. Good. And 
last one we're gonna have the feet on the ground and we're gonna clap the arms down into the ground on your mat you can find the rhythm of the drums whatever works for you inhale and exhale long breaths and after three full long breaths you can continue the uh, breath of fire through the tongue out this, this is any anger from the liver so if anybody's got any anger in you i know i do <laughs> i don't want it to come out in the wrong way so i'm just gonna drop it into your now we can add the feet Stop the floor very strong here All right, we got a little more. We're gonna sit up on our tailbone. And this time we're gonna have the hands back to support us a little bit. We're gonna rapidly bring the left knee in and then the right. So we're gonna alternate like that. This is deep right through the nose. That's all on this one. This also resets our hips, releases from the legs and makes our life beautiful because it reshapes the collagen. And of course, gets you into your core, right? <laughs> Feel all those layer of the abs. Beautiful legs for spring, eh? <laughs> All right. Now, next one. I promise it's the last one. <laughs> I say next time for like three hours now. <laughs> okay, this one's fun. So we're going to exhale, reach forward a bit. Point and flex the feet. And here again, we're going to look down at the navel. Squeeze the navel to the spine and do a few more uh, breaths of fire, like the panting like a dog. And we're going to start pointing and flexing the feet. Not so much the rim of the breath, but whatever works here. This one is working on the heart level, getting any frustration, any hurts, any pain, any kind of energy that you hold that does not serve your energy of goodness right now. And you're also gonna have very, very fresh breath and your breath is gonna become really sweet. So we're gonna be so kissable. <laughs> All right, inhale. Last one, I promise. <laughs> there I go again. This one's easy. Just lean back in your arm and just shake the legs the best you can here. Just let them kind of go up and down. They don't really move from the heel too much, just like a like a vibration. And you can also go against the wall if your um core got tired. And you can open them as wide as you can over time, just open more and more to get the groin a little bit more involved to activate our lymphatic flow. So this is all for different reasons, you know, it's for physical, mental, energetical, spiritual level, everything. 
So this Kundalini Kriyas are amazing. I didn't tell you what it was, but it's a Kundalini Kriya. Because <laughs> it just matter how we feel at the end. You may be silly, crazy, funky, funny, whatever, uh, but it works. And you're really gonna like your legs more and yourself more after this. All right, Ooh, that was good. Now, because we worked a lot on the sacral chakra, we're gonna end up with a meditation on this chakra, which is really beautiful with a, a sound of VAM. The VAM is the sound for the sacral chakra, our second chakra below the navel. And this girl is gonna say the sound for us and we're gonna repeat. And sit up against the wall if you want to really feel your spine aligned. Since we have the wall today, get your C-spans as far into the wall. And maybe make sure you don't have anything on your back of your head so you can feel the head resting as well. Get as tall as you can in the spine, rest your hands on your knees. So the sound for the sacral chakra is VAM, V A M. So we're going to chant with the VAM. That vibration is going to be resonating into here in our sacral chakra for creativity, creation, relationships. That's our center through which we connect with the world in a way, in a most intimate and powerful way. So we're gonna empower this chakra by using the sound, which is the mantra. In your eyes closed, imagine the color orange, like the sunset riding it into your second chakra below the navel, along the spine, somewhere at that level of the spine, L2, L3, L4 area. Bum. Now we try to repeat with her. Bum. Breathe in, and when you say bum, it's on the exhale. Bum. We imagine we are in a sacred cave of emerald green, amethyst, citrine, whatever color you want. Or maybe an orange cave if you're working with sacral chakra. And this energy of the cave increases the power of this chakra. Each chakra works directly with the um, energies of the sexual organs for male and female, since they're all located in this area. So you'll increase our sexuality, our sensuality, our deep connection with significant people in our universe. And of course, if you don't have one, you always will connect deeper with yourself. That comes first anyway. Um. 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 Thank you. 
see how over time and maybe your shoulders try to connect more with the wall that will align you a little bit more but keep the length of the spine and then relax the shoulders back and down that will help you lift and open your heart at the same time as opening the collarbones imagine your collarbones smiling your heart smiling your lips smiling and your brain smiling Now let's bring the uh, right hand to the heart, middle of the chest and left hand to the belly. And let's sound, create a sound a few more times, feeling the resonance in our own system, the vibration of the sound. Transform, transmute or heal anything or reprogram anything. Getting yourself an upgrade.
movement start to open the eyes, move the hands to the center of the heart. Placing the palms together and the knuckles of the palms into the sternum, giving it a little lift. We inhale and exhale. And on the next inhale, we chant home. Inhale again. Um, and last time, you know. Have a good day. Oh, how do you feel? I got to enjoy this precious gift from my friend. I had a party yesterday um, for my India getaway and for my birthday. And she brought me this. She said it's from Mexico. But to me, it's like, wow, it's for India because it's yeah. So it's my prelude for India. I'm getting used to the energy. I'm sure I'll buy a ton of these over there. <laughs> oh, it's such an appropriate. I love the colors too. I like. Oh yeah, oh my gosh, yeah. The real ones. Oh really? Yeah, let me know if you guys want anything. I can bring a lot, but. 